Good morning, fifth grade. Today we're going to continue reading in our Civil War text, A Life of Freedom. Before we get started, we have a quick write. It says, how do you think the lives of slaves will be different now that the Civil War is over and the Union won? How do you think that it will be different? Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready to keep reading. Our focus question for the day is what is the main idea of the text? And how did different groups of people respond to the 13th Amendment? Our vocabulary words today are bondage, and that is the state of being a slave. This person is in bondage, just like Jefferson Davis was when he was in prison, manacled to an iron ball. The second word is refugee. A refugee is someone who leaves their country to escape war um, or danger, and they move to another country. Draw a picture, draw a line to this picture because it represents refugees. And then the third word is opportunistic. That's when you um, realize that you could benefit um, from someone else's bad circumstance. So you take the opportunity to make life better for yourself, even though you're not actually improving the life of other people. Draw a line to this person. Um, we're going to learn about this carpetbagger um, today in our text, who was opportunistic. Turn the page, and our read aloud for today is on pages 60 and 61. So open up your text to pages 60 and 61, A Life of Freedom. And because we know that this is a nonfiction text, we're going to ask a how or why question about the title in order to find the main idea. And so um, the how or why question I came up with is, how did the slaves live a life of freedom. How did the slaves live a life of freedom? And we could probably add after the Civil War. Press pause to write down your question and play when you're ready to read. As we're reading, we want to make sure we underline the answer to our question, how did the slaves live a life of freedom? All right, after more than 200 years of bondage, America's slaves were freed when the 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution was passed in December 1865. Across the South, black Americans wandered the countryside looking for a new start. And we would underline that because that's part of our main idea. First, they, like, they left their plantations, but they weren't sure where to go. To deal with these estimated 4 million people, the government set up the Freedmen's Bureau, an agency that housed, fed, and educated refugees. And those refugees, that's another word for ex-slave. Meanwhile, opportunistic northerners called carpetbaggers tried to gain the political support of freedmen. In this sentence, Friedman refers to the ex-slaves who, who now had voting rights. Many ex-slaves returned to their former master's plantations and worked there again as poorly paid employees. And we would underline this sentence as well because after they wandered the countryside, they returned, many of them returned back to the plantation they'd spent their whole life working. Others helped rebuild the South to make it a good home for their families. All right, so when we're thinking about our main idea, we know that black Americans, after the Civil War, wandered the countryside, but many of them returned home, returned to their master's plantations, and worked there for little money. So in our main idea in box one, we would write, after slaves were freed, many returned to their former lives on the plantations of their masters working as poorly play, paid employees. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for number two. It says, how did black Americans respond to the 13th Amendment? 
And if I go back in my text, I actually, you should box in black Americans because this sentence tells us how they first responded to that 13th Amendment, which says that they were free. Okay? And it says that they wandered the countryside looking for a new start. So in box 2A, we would write black Americans responded to the 13th Amendment by wandering the countryside looking for a new start. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for 2B. It says, how did the government respond to the 13th Amendment? And if I go back in my paragraph, I see um, where it says to deal with these estimated 4 million people, the government, box in the government, and now we know our answer, set up the Freeman's Bureau, an agency that housed, fed, and educated refugees. And so in box 2B, we would write, the government responded to the 13th Amendment by setting up the Freedmen's Bureau, an agency that housed, fed, and educated refugees. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for box 3. It says, how did Northerners respond to the 13th Amendment? So let me go back in my text. I have found where it says Northerners. And I'm going to read that sentence after I box in Northerners. Meanwhile, opportunistic Northerners called carpetbaggers tried to gain the political support of freedmen who now have voting rights. So in box 3A, I would write Northerners responded to the 13th Amendment by moving to the South to try to gain political support from African Americans who could vote after the Civil War. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for 3B. It says, what does the name carpetbaggers suggest about what people thought of them? Okay, and, and we can kind of pick up from the from the text that carpetbaggers is not a compliment. <laughs> Car carpetbaggers is an insult. Um, and so if carpetbaggers is an insult, that means that people did not like them. So in 3B, we would write carpetbaggers is an insult, which means that people did not like them. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for box four. It says, why do you think many ex-slaves return to the plantation of their masters? And if we go back in the text, it says that the black Americans wandered the countryside, but eventually they return, many of them returned um, to their master's plantations. And we know that like if you've done if you've done something, some type of work your entire life, um, if there aren't like schools set up so that you can learn a new skill, then the only way you're going to really be able to make money is to keep doing what you've been doing. Um, and the landowners knew this. And so um, the slave, like the ex-slaves returned home because that was the work that they knew how to do. And they also didn't have any money to like buy a house or they didn't really ha they didn't have any money to start over because they'd never been paid before. Um, so many of them returned home. So in box four, we would write, ex-slaves might have returned to the plantations of their masters because they knew how to do the work and they did not have many options for housing. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the paragraph. It says, how does the author describe the life of freedom for African Americans after the Civil War? And so the author, you would write down your main idea um, as your topic sentence, and then you would use one of the boxes um, for a quote and then to explain the quote, how that supports your answer. 